I got into the career field sort of by, it wasn't my intended direction, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I went to grad school. I have a master's in counseling psychology. And so my intention was to become a therapist. Um, I knew I wanted to be a therapist since senior year of high school. Um, and so uh, I finally, you know, got there uh, several years later in grad school, you know, starting in 2009. Uh, within my course, there was a career development class. And it's something that I hadn't anticipated being part of the course. But if you're going to be giving therapy to adults, you need to know something about, you know, career development theory because adults work. It's the major activity of life at that point. Um, and so that led to me doing an internship uh, in a university, a Brute College in New York City. Um, and in that career center, it was a completely different model than most career centers because all the senior staff were PhD level counseling psychologists. And so it was a completely different environment than most you know, career centers. And so in that environment, I learned to take a more holistic view of my client. So the example I always give is that um, when the student walked into my office, my first question wasn't about their major or their intended career path. It was about who was in their family and then doing a genogram laying out, you know, their family tree, understand education levels, you know, what uh, careers and professions already existed, so I can get a sense of the environment they're coming out of and what influences they might have in their career. Um, and so that's what sort of led me on this path. Um, I worked in a, in a school um, managing an internship program after I graduated then moved over to Ivy Exec, which was my last full-time role in which I provided as a senior career advisor serving mid to senior level executives, uh, providing you know, short uh, career consultation calls uh, for individuals across industries around the globe um, you know, uh, at all levels, essentially learn to troubleshoot and give you know, on-spot career advice, uh, resume critiques and all of that. And that led me uh, to, again, not planned, <laughs> start my own business. I had to take a step back for personal reasons. And then, you know, thankfully I had the skill set. And so starting career coaching practice made the most sense. And so here I am almost two years later, you know, with my practice. For 2021, I think I'd really encourage job seekers to prioritize their values in their job search and also check in with themselves about what stories they're telling about themselves to themselves, um, especially if they had a really hard 20, uh, 2020. Um, the reason why I am focused on those two things is because there's so much uh, job seekers forget to check in on themselves when it comes to launching a new job search that I want to make sure that they are internally calibrated and aligned before launching themselves out there. Um, when it comes to values in 2020, we really had to take a step back and figure out what was important to us, uh, whether it's having the flexibility to spend more time with our families, realizing that we want work that's more meaningful, perhaps that means being with a mission-driven organization or working for a product or service you really believe in. And I could go on and on. There's so many values out there and they're really important drivers in terms of how we orient ourselves to the world and what makes us feel fulfilled. And if you're working in a work environment that either challenges your values or even goes against them directly, that makes for short longevity at whatever job it is you're in. And you might be job searching, you know, six to 18 months later when you just landed something new. And I wouldn't want any job seeker to have to repeat that challenging process, you know, too soon. And so by taking stock of your values, you can conduct a job search where you're trying to intentionally target companies that align with support or even promote the values that you hold within their workplace and how they conduct business. And you can find this out by asking values-based questions. So if recognition from superiors is important to you, you ask a company, well, how do you celebrate your employees when they do good work? And that's a really quick way to check in and see if this employer is gonna support the values that you have for yourself uh, you know, within your work. Um, I want people to be happy where they land. And so making sure your values are in place is a great way to do so. Um, as far as that you know, internal narrative piece, uh, if you had a really hard 2020 or just you know, your life in general is challenging and professionals might find themselves either unemployed, underemployed, or maybe their career is not quite where they want it to be, which happens to all of us at different points. Uh, it's important to make sure that our internal narrative is one that is not fixated or focused on our temporary situation, for example, a hard 2020, and we're looking at a broader, bigger picture of what our career has been. Um, if we have this negative internal narrative about who we are, the value that we have to offer, is anyone even going to hire me? Can I make the move that I want to make? It's going to impact the message we're telling to the world because there's internal dissonance and we're not internally aligned. 
and we're telling ourselves a negative story. And so I think it's important for job seekers to check in with themselves. What stories am I telling myself? What's, what are the truths that are available to me? And am I telling those truths or am I allowing, you know, negative, uh, you know, tinged or tinted narrative to be predominant within what, within what I tell myself and what I share with the world? Um, and so by checking in on what those narratives are, job seekers can better align themselves internally, uh, reality test what's true, and look at the broader picture of what they've been able to accomplish overall, take stock of their value, and then tell a more positive story to the world when to go out there to network and to land a job, and that will hopefully bring them success going forward. So prioritize your values, and then also check in with the stories you're telling yourself, and make sure that they're real, they're true, and they're positive. I think something that I noticed you get into the end of 2020 and I believe is going to carry on into 2021 is a uh, really lengthy interview processes. Um, I had one client who I think met maybe 10 people in one day, you know, virtually, of course, um, and people just going through several, several rounds of interviews. I think, you know, flashback before the pandemic, which feels like, you know, 10 years ago, if not longer, um, you know, I think most of us were used to doing maybe three to five rounds of interviews to land a job. I think that's fairly typical and average. Um, I'm hearing and seeing, you know, upwards of five, so five, six, seven, eight, you know, rounds uh, for some people. And then sometimes, unfortunately, still not getting the job after going through, jumping through that many hoops. Um, and I think that the challenge that people are encountering uh, on the job seeker and, and employer side is that it's hard to get a good feel of somebody through a video screen. Um, you know, in person makes a huge difference. What's the energy someone's giving off? You know, what do they like to work with? Am I getting a good vibe, quote unquote, from the person? It's a little harder to get through a computer screen. And so I can imagine maybe employers are a bit more hesitant to pull the trigger as far as hiring someone uh, when they are virtually meeting and you can't judge, do I wanna have beer with this person after you know, work? Can I imagine you know, working 40 plus hours you know, a week with this person uh, through a screen? And so, and then on the job seeker side, I think that you know, there's a lot more practice needed in terms of how to come across as your best self on camera. Um, it's a weird medium for all of us. We're all still getting used to it. Uh, there's a big difference between being on a Zoom call with colleagues versus having to sell yourself you know, to uh, a new employer who doesn't know you. Um, and so I think I'd encourage job seekers to do as much practice as they can uh, from the staging to making sure their tech is right to just practicing their answers and how they can connect, practice looking at the camera uh, so they're not you know, looking elsewhere and making eye contact as it were with the uh, employer. Um, all those things are important for job seekers to be aware of and really put a bit of extra effort into uh, in this coming year to come across as best as possible. Um, I think you know people on TV maybe have to overdo it a little bit for it to come through the TV screen. I wonder if that might be helpful advice for us to think of as job seekers to be a little bit more, not don't be extra, but maybe just a little bit more than you would since you know there's a screen between you, you and the, uh, the employer. When I write, I think I'm really trying to make uh, an emotional connection or spark an emotional reaction uh, with the content because that's how uh, you know information is remembered if there is some sort of emotional connection to it. Um, and I'm trying to bring something to awareness as best as I can and uh, or provide a new perspective on what might be a very common topic. Um, in career coaching, there's not much that's new under the sun but I'm hoping to give, <clears throat> pardon, me, <clears throat> pardon me, a new perspective or angle, you know, on what um, is being discussed so that people can latch onto it, understand it, you know, resonate with it in a different way. And so I try to draw on, all I can draw on is my personal experience, you know, what I've been through, uh, where I live, where I've lived, my culture reference points, just my view on the world. And that's how I try to offer up different ways of seeing things. Um, and in addition, I try to offer practical advice uh, along with raising awareness um, because I feel like I'll be leaving people hanging if I only raise awareness but don't really give people any actual next steps. 
Um, and so like, if you had something in your hair and I just said, hey, you got something in your hair, but I don't tell you where it is or how to you know, get rid of it. I'm just kind of leaving you hanging, right? Um, and so I wouldn't want to be that guy, you know, that just leaves people hanging after raising awareness. And now you're all self-conscious because I told you you got something in your hair. Um, so with my content, you know, I want to uh, not only raise people's awareness, uh, but also give them some things to think about, some actionable next steps, uh, a way to make some sort of progress beyond simply being aware, um, because we all need that sort of support. And so that's what I try to do uh, when, I, when I do my posts. I think I, whenever I'm able to do a reframe or perspective shift, I think that type of content I provide really, you know, strikes a chord with my audience. Um, I think because my background in psychology, I, again, I have a, a master's in mental health counseling, um, I try to highlight the psychological and emotional factors that, you know, go into the job search because it is such a challenging, you know, life activity. Um, I feel like it's perhaps a bit under discussed, the psychological toll and the emotional toll of going through it. And so I think that people might feel seen or understood or heard if I'm able to voice something that they are currently going through or have experienced, you know, during their job search and bring it to light and again, provide, you know, support in moving forward or thinking differently, or doing things differently. And so uh, I think that my content might be resonating because I'm able to, you know, do those things and, and uh, point out things that people are experiencing, but haven't seen voiced, you know, in, on this platform. And so I think that's, you know, what uh, the value I try to bring with my content.